Sharks have roamed the Earth's oceans for 450 million years. They were by far the most abundant predators on the planet until a new predator began to prey on the sharks. An apex predator that has decimated shark populations by 90% in 30 years. Humans. I learned this watching shark water extinction an Amazon documentary that explores the shark trade which operates around Central and North America. We kill 150 million sharks every year. Fishermen pull these sharks out of the ocean, cut off its fins and put these finless sharks still alive back into the ocean to bleed to death. They do this mostly for soup. Shark extracts have also been found in medicines, in pet food, and even in cosmetics. As Rob Stewart, the director of the documentary puts it, we are rubbing our faces with dead shark and we don't realize it. This is depressing, but isn't that the tone of almost every eco documentary? That's why I've never liked watching them. Of the four that I've watched, I've wept in three of them. This is very common. I know many people who are very uncomfortable with the tone and the overall effect of these documentaries. So we either avoid watching them, which I've done many times, or we watch them and try to forget them as soon as possible. This is unfortunate because documentaries show us a side of the world and a side of nature that we otherwise never would have experienced. So is there another way? Can we view these documentaries with a different perspective that not only make them more watchable, but also leave us feeling empowered rather than depressed? Today, we explore that question with shark water extinction as an example. Most of the eco documentaries that highlight some or another form of exploitation have an underlying theme. Humans are greedy and we'll do anything for money. Shark finning is banned in 90 countries. This is an illegal trade that thrives because people have understood one thing. Sharks mean money. If we view these documentaries from this simplistic greed perspective, we are very quickly going to become Agent Smith from The Matrix. Human beings are a disease, a cancer of this planet. You are a plague. No thank you. This bleak outlook can be very crippling for a viewer like you and me. Our brains will put aside any uncomfortable topic that make us look bad or feel bad or feel guilty. Humans have many faults. Greed is certainly one of them. But saying that all of this is for money is very one dimensional. Money is simply a tool for people to get everything else that they want. Basic needs like food, shelter and clothing and higher psychological needs like social status or self-esteem. For example, this documentary is shot in Panama and Costa Rica, where most of the fishermen involved in this trade barely get their basic needs met. They just want food, shelter and good health. They need money for that. They see money in the shark trade, so they desensitize themselves and kill sharks. They probably know they shouldn't be doing it, but self-preservation and the security of our tribe or family is the most dominant emotional feeling in humans more dominant than compassion and love for other creatures. With the first bleak outlook, I felt upset and angry and I thought the solution was to kill all humans. We are the cure. But when we begin to dig deeper and try to understand the aspirations and the needs of the people involved in such trades, I think that's where we become more constructive. We start to think of solutions and alternatives. I saw an interesting solution in another documentary called Racing Extinction, which is about manta ray fishing in the coastal waters of Indonesia. The fishermen knew what they were doing was wrong, but they did it anyway because they had to earn a living. So instead of persecuting these farmers, they were given an alternative livelihood in ecotourism. Instead of killing manta rays for a living, they were given an opportunity to show people the beauty of these creatures for a living. The fishermen embrace this with open arms. These documentaries seem like they're personally attacking us or they want us to take individual responsibility. 
Rob reiterates that we are unaware of what's happening in the world and that helps us turn a blind eye. I disagree. When you're trying to create awareness and trying to generate action about something as gruesome as this, our brain's tendency to ignore uncomfortable topics kicks in. We become aware and choose to turn a blind eye. With strong mafia groups involved, with governments and corporations unwilling to change the status quo, what can we do by enlightening ourselves about shark exploitation? Even if I wanted to cut every single product that has shark extracts from my life, how do I go about doing that? Can I do that without disrupting my normal life? We all have a pool of worry in our heads. This pool consists of everything we care and worry about. Family, health, work. This pool is finite. We can't worry about everything in the world. So the minute we see a more pressing, less depressing and easily solvable concern, sharks will leave our pool of worry. I don't think it has to be like that. I think that individual pools of worry and the responsibilities attached with it create a community pool of worry. For example, if you care about water conservation and I'm working for water pollution, together we're addressing both problems. If we can each take one problem in society, be it racism or rape or climate change, and dedicate our lives to fixing that, together we're addressing all problems. So if a documentary helps even one person take up a cause and dedicate their lives to it, it adds to the community pool of worry. If the cause resonates with you, take it up. Or else, support those who do take it up. Rob Stewart was one man. He dedicated his entire life to saving sharks from extinction. Did he make a difference? Yes. For example, his footage from shark water extinction of mile-long fishing nets off the coast of Los Angeles helped the California government ban this mode of fishing, which is so dangerous to sharks and other marine life. Yes, eco-documentaries are depressing. Yes, it's horrible how we treat the natural world. Yes, it feels personal. We need to move past these emotions, find solutions or alternatives, or support the people who are doing that. This perspective will help me sit through the documentaries that I watch in the future. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? What do you think about eco-documentaries? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. I know it was a serious kind of a topic today, but one that I really felt strongly about, so I wanted to put it out there. As always, there's a full transcript of this video in the first link in the description. If you liked the video, then please like the video, share it with your family and friends, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Check out some of our other videos. Join us as we try to make the world ecologically intelligent.